Wise to her great destiny, mankind will use the utmost care. Science and sane technology, unbroken peace and joy to share for ages. In this lengthy span of time to teach and guide the race, there will arise a superman and woman to create a pace. A new society, new laws, new values, standards, and new norms. A new world order free of flaws, which more with law divine conforms. In course of time, by grace divine, the earth will be a paradise, whose habitants like gods will shine, transmuted by the gracious prize. From baser metals into golds, long-lived, enlightened, healthy, wise, a race of heroes strong and bold, whose pleasure ground will be the skies. The one sunk in reflection deep upon the riddle of the soul, should his attention firmly keep, centered on it, with full control. Converging on pure consciousness until its span begins to extend to new dimensions, more or less, as happens when we height ascend. To see a new panorama which does the former view replace, or as when ice begins to thaw and we see water in its place. In the same way, when mind expands to change into the supermind, the concentrated knower lands on an Olympia so refined so new and foreign to the earth as day to night, a heaven of bliss, so new to us that sans rebirth we always would the rapture miss. As often as the vagrant mind escapes the ego's tether slack, some other errant course to find, so often one should bring it back and keep it riveted on the soul, the lucid pool of consciousness the center of our being whole, which gives identity to us. A time will come this knowing pool will spread out as a drop of oil does on a sheet of water cool in a pond to reward one's toil. Inner sensations, lights or sounds, if mild, need not make seekers pause. But if they least exceed the bounds, and some pain or distraction cause, one must the practice stop to give a rest to the overtaxed brain until completely cured to lead a life immune from stress and strain. The study that can be of use in training for this enterprise, or which can yield important clues, though at this stage not so precise, is of the accounts left by the few who found access to this estate, and from a sparkling drop of dew became the effulgent sun in state. This is what must be kept in mind by those who seek the state divine, that when the chains round them unwind, they, like the solar orb, will shine, and by their thought and action bring a message of hope to mankind, something original from the spring of life for others hard to find. This is the diadem that was worn by saviors, prophets, and the rest who did the human world adorn with gems of thought among the best. They gathered from the eternal spring of life to show the way to God, both for the beggar and the king, a path which they themselves had trod. What can it profit if a man becomes a walking library, but inside is no older than a child of tantrums never free. There always is among the learned a mere abnormal moiety, which has into problem children turned eccentric, though in knowledge rich. Or loading of the mind disturbs the organic balance of the brain. Its native healthy upgrowth curbs or warps and twists it with the strain. The guiding lights of modern thought, no knowledge have of this abuse, no inkling of the havoc wrought when brain is forced to excessive use. They know not that our tender brain is mounting up a hard ascent, and we must vigilant remain a wrong direction to prevent. A huge, securely fastened weight suspended from an urchin's neck would soon deformities create a beauty of the figure wreck. This is what modern pressures do without our knowledge to our brains. And with that, to our thinking too, while we collect material gains. This grave neglect to this is due, 
that knowledge often takes it ill to be told what is plain and true, that our brain is evolving still. Convinced that what he says is right, as dogma not a proven fact, for he cannot throw any light on how mind does on brain react, nor has the least awareness of what fuels mind, and how is it he does not know what marks off a genius from a normal wit. What I assert will be borne out when more is known about the brain, and those who now my statement doubt will not long in the dark remain. That genius is attended by abnormal or eccentric traits is nature's hint that we should try our best to explore these morbid states and find out why. Before its bloom, the human mind degenerates or is enshrouded in the gloom of madness, as if ruled by fates. A hundred cases are there to show how often genius is allied to madness, but we do not know why they should flourish side by side. A study of the more remote religious genius could have solved the riddle had we taken note that knowledge from priestcraft evolved. Empiricists lack, as a class, in knowledge of religious lore and have no inkling what a mass of data there exists to explore, which bears out that the ancients knew how to manipulate the brain and that known only to a few, the secret has since buried lain. More than a polymathic mind, nature demands a fuller life. That is why scholars lag behind the enterprising in the strife. Knowledge is as much in the dark about the destiny of man as nurslings toddling in the park about their city's master plan. We must remember when we dwell on evolution that in man the ascent cannot be made pell-mell but in accordance with some plan and that the aim is he should grow in noble traits and qualities and not a disproportion show leading to freaks and oddities.